year was 1929. The effects of the Great Depression uh, were already being felt. John Griffith uh, gathered his wife and a newborn son, and they packed up their belongings into an old Model A Ford, and they headed west in search of opportunity. Well, when they arrived at the Mississippi River, uh, John found a job there as a tender of one of the many great uh, railroad bridges. You know, day after day, Don, John would uh, sit in the control room uh, and direct the enormous gears and machinery of the immense bridge over the mighty Mississippi River. You know, he would look wistfully as the bulky uh, barges and the splendid ships uh, glided gracefully under his elevated bridge. Each day, uh, he looked on sadly as those ships carried with them the shattered dreams and his visions of far off, off places and exotic destination. Well, let's fast forward about eight years. He was now taking his uh, eight-year-old son, Greg, uh, to work with him. Uh, the young boy watched in astonishment and amazement and pride as his father operated the levers that raise and lower the bridge uh, that allowed the trains to cross the river. Well, one day, after a leisurely lunch together, uh, the sound of a distant train whistle was heard. John had lost track of time. The train was approaching. Instructing his young son, Greg, to stay put, John bolted uh, for the steer house, and when he arrived, uh, he checked the river in both directions for approaching boats. All was clear. Then he checked the machinery and the gears below him, and to his horror, found that his son Greg has, had not stayed put as he was instructed. The eight-year-old son had followed his father and had fallen off of the catwalk into the gears. The sound of the approaching train nearly drowned out the shrieking cries of his son, Daddy, where are you? Lowering the bridge would crush his son in an agonizing death. Not lowering the bridge would send hundreds of train passengers to their death. The shrieking cries of his son were slowly silenced by the grinding of the gears and the crushing of his bones. What seemed like an eternity later, the roar of the passing train overwhelmed the sounds of John pounding on the glass in the control room as he cried out, you know, what's the matter with you people? Don't you know? Don't you care? Don't you know I've sacrificed my son for you? What's wrong with you? This video is being recorded one week before Memorial Day. Each year, I scan the cultural landscape and I get a similar sense of anguish, outrage, and grief. People will be flocking to the beaches, lighting up the barbecue grill, drinking beer, and in every pagan way imaginable, living it up. After all, it's a long weekend and school's out. Well, at least the passengers on that train didn't know that their luxurious voyage and safety came at the price of a man sacrificing his son. The story of John Griffith was first published in the Michigan Baptist Bulletin in 1967. It illustrates another sacrificial death that took place some 2,000 years ago as Christ died for our sins. Our freedom here in the United States has come at a high price. Our freedom from sin has also come at a very high price.
That's what I think. Would you share your thoughts with me below? I read each one, and they are an encouragement to me. You can also connect with me on Twitter. I am at Data Genesis. And you can find the text version of this blog at the address found at the top of the screen. And if you are moved and inspired by this video, there are several others, and we have other contributors. Uh, and you can check them out by subscribing to this YouTube channel.